The next mission to the moon should not only be to plant a flag and then go back again, but to build something that we can remain on the moon for the future. Regolad is an excellent step into the direction of human settlements on extraterrestrial surfaces. So what Regolite does is uh, creating this new technology that allows you to carry less weight. What's novel about the project is that we don't need any glue or binder to hold the grains together. We gain a lot of knowledge in this project. Solar sintering is a process that harvests energy provided by the sun to produce a solid object made from granular material such as sand, dust, and in the case of the moon, lunar regolith. In this process, solar rays are focused using a lens creating a concentrated solar beam strong enough to bond granular matter without melting it. Objects are crafted through an additive process building up layer by layer. For each layer, after we have done the deposition, the tray goes to the area where the solar beam is and uh, it performs the sintering under the sun. Then the tray goes below a stamper that uh, stamps and compacts and improves, we believe, the quality of the part at the end. And we repeat this process again and again and again. When we live on the moon in the future, we will need to protect ourselves from solar radiation and from micrometeorites. To protect ourselves, we need two to three meter thick walls. The nice thing about uh, solar sintering fragilizers is that you, you, you build the elements that you need on the moon. You don't need to bring everything to the moon. We only want to use solar radiation and the lunar regolith, the sand that you have on the surface of the moon. And this is very useful because that makes a future lunar base, for example, less dependent on Earth. So you can build everything you need by using the elements that are there. On the surface of the moon, it is extremely useful to work with interlocking building elements to avoid any use of mortar as binding material. With such on-site fabricated building elements, Different types of structures can be made by using different brick geometries. We developed geometries for the sintered interlocking brick elements and uh, modeled them in 3D, uh, transferred it, so these specimens can be sintered and printed. To analyze the interlocking bricks itself, we use finite element software. There we can build parametric calculation models that allow us to make a geometric optimization together with a structural analysis. And within the course of the Regolite project, we want to go from a bulk brick into a more smart building element. And in the end, we want to have that building element as part of a larger habitat structure that then can serve as shelter on the moon already. To develop and implement the Regolite project, five partners came together. At Space Application Services, two of our teams are involved in the Regolite project, one the Future Projects and Exploration team, and the other the Robotics team. We develop, design and integrate the systems and the software that are needed to go from the CAT model that the architect wants to build on the moon to the commands that you send to the robot, to the movements and the robot itself that is going to do the sintering on the moon. Liquifer's involvement in the Regolite project was threefold. Firstly, we developed scenarios with our partner COMEX, looking at uh, the first lunar base and its enlargement into a lunar settlement. Secondly, we designed and developed geometries for interlocking building elements in cooperation with COMEX and Bollinger, Kromann, Schneider. And thirdly, Liquifer is coordinating the outreach and dissemination part for the overall project. COMEX is uh, involved in two developments inside Regolite. Uh, first of all, we are working on the uh, architecture of a uh, new lunar base. And the second development is uh, our participation in the development of interlocking elements that will be sintered through Regolite that can ultimately be used for building these facilities. 
In the Regulite project, we have two roles. One is uh, more in the design part with uh, Liquifer and, and Comex to uh, work on structural topologies, uh, let's say, for different uses, for, let's say domes or linear vaults or pavements and find uh, the structural solutions for these parts. The second part of our role is more connected to the DLR and SAS to work on the material side of the Regulate project. DLR, the German Aerospace Center, is leading the overall project as coordinator. DLR brings to the project a long-standing expertise, first in the application and use of solar radiation in the solar oven. We use that to sinter sand into building elements. Then we use our expertise in handling granular materials and melting materials. The solar oven is a facility here at DLR to demonstrate the uses of thermal solar light. What we do is we collect with a so-called heliostat the sunlight from the air. We concentrate that with collectors and we focus that inside the solar oven building onto a very small spot. And with that spot you can produce extreme heat in a very short time. For our project Regolite, we use that solar spot on a translation stage where we can move in X, Y and Z direction and we expose unsintered loose material to the solar spot and the solar spot then takes care of melting or gluing the sand together into something that can be used as a building material. An important part of the project was to develop lunar-based scenarios to define the requirements for different applications. Scenarios include um, the description of how a basic lunar outpost can grow into a settlement within a given time frame and what kind of building typologies and structures are used for this. That includes non-pressurized shelters for vehicles or equipment, pressurized shelters for habitation, also a launch pad apron to prevent the dust from coming too close to the lunar habitation, or terrain leveling as would be used for a telescope on the far side of the moon, or surface battlement for roads and pathways. Our goal is to find structural topologies that fit to the different scenarios. The use of solar sintering in such a unique research area was comprehensively examined in three test assemblies, the so-called printing campaigns. First, we do a system that works in ambient conditions in the solar furnace of DLR that uh, does the 3D printing with XYZ table. To simulate the sunlight on the moon, intense xenon lights are used. The setup is equipped with a shutter device. When the shutter is open, light falls onto the printer table and loose regolith is sintered and glued to the next layer of sand. By closing the shutter, the sintering process is stopped to allow the distribution of a new layer of material. And then we move into a, a mobile printing head that we can actually use without the solar furnace, redirect the beams of the sun uh, onto the printing part and that we can take around and move around as it will be on the moon in the future. The third printing campaign is set in a special surrounding, a vacuum chamber to simulate conditions which would be found on the moon. The novel thing about Regolite is that we take a process that works in ambient pressure and we modify that in a way that we can then apply it in vacuum conditions, which is the relevant environment on the moon. These different printing campaigns produced a variety of printed samples, which were compared for their material, geometrical and physical properties, and their building capacity. We gain a lot of knowledge in this project about materials, about design, about environment, about resources, about using resources in a proper way. If you think about the deserts on Earth, this is an environment quite similar to the lunar surface. You have plenty of sand, you have plenty of sun, but not much else. And we are thinking about applications where we use solar-sintered desert sand in future applications. You could use the same techniques of sintering sand on the terrestrial environment too. 
in a way it is a guide to use local resources as building material. The Regolite project aims at using techniques we can readily test here on Earth and uses the same technologies for building shelters and habitats and landing platforms. As a next step of the Regolite project would be to solar center a one-to-one -one scale mock-up of a human-sized habitat. As a development, Regolite is already leading the way for future solutions for building habitats on extraterrestrial surfaces.